Okay, so now I'm going to continue with um, C12, June 2017, IAL paper. And I was requested to do a whole paper, and that's what I'm doing. So here we're asked in question number four um, to find dy dx and d squared y dx squared for the curve, which has an equation y equals 4x times root x plus 48 over root x minus root 8, and x must be greater than 0. So first, let's get re get this thing ready to be uh, differentiated. Um, and you get it ready to be differentiated by basically writing the powers on index form and writing them as numerators. So over here, you've got 4x times x to the power of a half. So I'll write that like that for now. Okay, plus, and this is 48 over x to the power of a half, which becomes 48 times x to the power of minus a half the x to the power of a half, which is underneath, goes on top as a negative power, minus the square root of 8. We can just leave that as it is, as we're not, you know, this has just become 0 when we differentiate it. So now we've got basically y equals 4x to the power of, or this is like to the power of 1 times x to the power of a half. You have to add the power, so that's 1 plus a half, which is 1.5, or 3 over 2, plus, and this is, the rest of it is ready to be differentiated. So we can just write it down and then we can differentiate, okay, this expression. So we got dy dx, we're doing part A, part 1. So dy dx, therefore, is going to be multiply the power, 3 over 2, times 4x, and then subtract 1 from the power. Now that's 3 over 2 minus 1, which is a half, okay. And then you're going to have minus a half times plus 48. So a half of 48 is 24. So you have minus 24x to the power of negative a half. Sorry. You take one from the power. So you multiply by the power. So you have minus a half times 48, which is minus, which is minus 24. And then you have x to the power of minus 3 over 2. Because you've got minus a half minus another 1. So it's like minus 0. 0.5 minus 1, which is minus 1.5, minus 3 over 2. And the constant term, this is the square root of 8, it just becomes 0. Any constant that you differentiate becomes 0. Okay, so now we've got here dy dx equals 3 over 2 times 4 leaves you with 6. So you've got 6x to the power of a half minus 24x to the power of minus 3 over 2. I'm going to leave it in that form as part 2 is asking us to find d squared y over dx squared. So we've got to differentiate this once more. So we have a half times 6, which is 3. And we have x. Take 1 from the power. A half minus 1 is minus a half. And then you've got minus 3 over 2 times minus 24, which gives you plus. So you've got plus 3 over 2 times 24. x the power of. And you take 1 away from the power. So you've got minus 3 over 2 minus another 1, which is minus 5 over 2. Okay, and then we're just going to simplify that. That's 3, okay, um, x to the power of minus a half. And this cancels with this, leaving you with 12. 3 times, um, that's 2, 12. 3 times 12 is 36. You have plus 36 x to the power of um, minus 5 over 2. Just simplify that. Okay, now, part B says use part A to find the exact coordinates of the stationary point of C. So this curve has a stationary point. Now, the stationary point is when the gradient of the curve is zero. So when dy dx is equal to zero, because dy dx is the gradient function. So what we found in part one is called the gradient function. It tells us when the gradient of the curve what the gradient of the curve is. So we want to find the stationary point. Now stationary points are when the gradient of the curve is zero. Okay, so we want to find when dy dx is equal to zero and find the x and y values on that curve. So we have to equate the, the uh, equation for dy dx as zero. So you have 6x squared minus 24 over x to the power of 3 over 2. Okay, I've just written this as a denominator here, that's, and that's equal to zero. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply throughout the whole of this by x to the power of 3 over 2. I always like to get rid of the denominators when I'm dealing with solving equations with fractions. So 
the denominator here is 1 on this side and there's 3 over 2 on this particular term. So if I multiply everything by x to the power of 3 over 2, I'll be ending up with a fraction, with, or sorry, with an equation without any fractions in it. So I have 6x to the power of a half times x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 24 over x to the power of 3 over 2 times x to the power of 3 over 2 equals 0 times anything is 0. Okay, so now when I um, simplify this, I have x to the power of something times x to the power of something. I have to add the powers. So I've got 6 times x, and if I add these two powers, I'm going to get a half plus 3 over 2, which is 4 over 2, which is 2. So 6x squared, and I'm going to have minus 24, because these two will cancel out, yeah, equals 0. And this is something which I can therefore solve quite easily. I know that x squared is equal to, well, let's just do it step by step. 6x squared equals 24. Therefore, x squared is equal to 4. So x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4. Okay, so x is equal to plus or minus 2. However, in the beginning of the question, we were told that x must be greater than 0. Okay, so therefore, I know, all right, as x must be greater than 0, I can say that x must equal just the 2. Okay, so that's part B. And part C is telling us to determine, uh, no, then it says uh, find the exact coordinates of the stationary point of C. So I need to use this x value and use the original equation to find the y coordinates. I found the x coordinate. Okay, so it's going to be 2 and something, and I have to find what that something is now. So I need to take x equals 2 and substitute it back into the original equation that we were given for y, which is 4x root x plus 48 over root x minus root 8. So you've got 4x, so you'll put this into the equation, 4x times root x, okay, and what was it? Um, plus 48 divided by root x plus 48 divided by root x plus, was it plus? No, minus root 8, minus root 8. Okay, so that's a minus here, root 8. So if I substitute x into this equation, I'll have y equals 4 times 2 times root 2 plus 48 over root 2 minus root 8. Okay, and that should give me the y coordinate. So let's try to simplify this a little bit. Okay, let me get rid of this stuff here. Part C is going to go down here. I'll sort that out later. Whoops, easy. Okay, move this in. Okay, so now we need to find what y is. So we've got y is equal to 8 times root 2. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 root 2. Okay. Plus, now let me rationalize this. I'm going to multiply both by root 2. Okay. So I'll have 48 times root 2 over 2 minus root 8. Okay. Now this is equal to 8 root 2 plus, this gives me 24 okay times root 2 minus now root 8 is equal to 2 root 2 because you've got 4 times 2 underneath the square so the square root of 4 is 2 so you've got 2 root 2 so we can now simplify this y coordinate this is 8 minus 2 which is um, 6 and 6 plus 24 which is 30 so you have 30 root 2 so the coordinates of the point or the stationary point did it give us a, a letter to call it no, nope. so the stationary point has its coordinates 2 and 30 times root 2. Okay, that's the stationary point that they asked us to find. That's the coordinates, the x and y coordinates of that point. So that's part um, B, and I'm going to take part C onto the next page and answer it there. Okay. Um, I don't need all of that. I need this. Okay. All right. Let me just do something here. I'll get some play.
piece. Sorry about that. No problem, let's do this. Okay, so now, determine whether the stationary point of C is a maximum or a minimum, giving a reason for your answer. So now, if it's a maximum, then the x value that we find for it, if you put it into the second differential, okay, then that will be something which is less than zero. And if it's a minimum, if we take the second differential, we take the x value of the turning point and we put it into the second differential, d squared y over dx squared, and we find that's greater than zero, then it's going to be a minimum. So what we need to do is we need to take the x value that we found, which is x is equal to 2, and we need to substitute it into the second differential and see what happens. Okay, so let's go back and remember what the second differential was. The second differential was um, 3x to the power of minus a half plus 36x to the power of um, minus 5 over 2. So 3x to the power of minus a half. So you had 3x to the power of minus a half, and you had, just make sure, there we are, 3x to the power of minus a half plus 36x to the power of minus 5 over 2, plus 36x to the power of minus 5 over 2. Okay, so we're going to substitute x equals 2 into there, so you're going to have 3 over the square root of x, which is the, the square root of 2, plus 36 over, this is like um, the square root of 2 to the power of 5. Okay, so you end up with, this is going to give you something which is obviously a positive value, isn't it? Okay, so this is going to definitely be positive. We don't even actually have to work out what it is. Okay, so for sure it's going to be positive. We've got something positive plus something positive, so there's no way that can be negative. So therefore, as d squared y over dx squared is greater than zero, it's a minimum. Okay, so minimum point. Okay, so there we have the answers to question number four. Okay, that's A, B and C, all answered in this video.